Um, Did I mention there's an airport right down the road? Well, I'm going to rewind with Beach Woody because uh, I had something for this. Today we're doing another vlog, vlog uh, out at Edge of Valley Vineyards. And I should have put my microphone on before I started this, but who knows how this is going. Uh, we're in the beautiful Edna Valley, um, a great day out, and um, I'm going to be doing an 18 barrel flight, which is just three tastes, and I have four microphones. This is their Sauvignon Blanc. It's partially done in acacia wood, which is fantastic. Um, there's a little bit of coconut on the finish, as Teresa, my tasting attendant, told me. You get that tart Sauvignon Blanc taste to it that is always hit and miss, but it's varietal specific. If you, if you like Sauvignon Blanc, it's light, it has the acid, um, a little bit of tartness, you can taste uh, a little lime. And then just that hint of coconut on the finish. It's nice, it's fun, it's refreshing, it's crisp. Yeah, that's a fun Sauvignon Blanc from Edna Valley Vineyard. All right, next up we're getting the 2016 uh, Winemaker Series Pinot Noir. I pulled out my dead cat because um, it's windy out and I want you to be able to hear me without the constant noise of wind in the background. Beautiful red fruit on the nose, um, red cherry, raspberry, mmm. That hits pretty well. It's quite nice. Lighter. It says here 29% new French oak, uh, 14 months in barrel. And this is all from Edna Valley down here. There's a little bit of toastiness on the finish. Um, you start to, to taste that French oak. And again, just a beautiful day out here. I have the outdoor tasting area to myself essentially. Uh, I guess it's a slow day for them. Every table and seating is socially distanced. You're required to wear masks inside. It seems like they really know what they're doing. And uh, I think that is gonna look good um, on the weekend when they, they have more people out here going out and tasting, trying to capture some normalcy in this time of pandemic. As long as you follow the rules, they're, they're, they give you a one hour window uh, to do your tasting. And it's only three tastes, but they, they up the amount in your taste uh, to limit the amount of contact that you have with the uh, attendant. And what's nice is they also bring you a fresh glass with each pour. All right, next up is the 2017 Red V Blend, which the V stands for the Roman numeral five, uh, because they have five different varietals in here, um, which are Syrah, Tnot, Tempranillo, Grenache, and Petite Syrah. Um, I've told a lot of these come from up in Paso Robles, and uh, the rest come up in the come from the Santa Lucia Highlands. Also, I was told that um, it's a good middle ground wine for both heavy red drinkers and more middle ground um, everyday drinkers. On the nose, there's uh, blueberry. On the nose, blueberry, boysenberry, they say fig, uh, which I get a little hint of. Definitely a fair amount of tannin to this. Um, on the mid palate, you get like a hint of vanilla. They say nutmeg. I don't know about that. The tannins kind of have a little red fruit quality to it. Um, like a blackberry bramble kind of thing going on. I could definitely see this pairing well with um, American food, uh, as was suggested. Pizza, pasta, burgers, barbecue. The tannins really, really linger on that finish. An interesting wine. Uh, you could definitely tell the Tanat's fighting to get through that Syrah, Grenache, um, 
Ah, Petit Syrah, yeah. Um, they all kind of coalesce, the lighter lighter reds forward, and then finish with that, that wallop from the traditionally heavier varietals to not Petit Syrah. Helped to round it out, I assume gave it some of that nice color. Yeah, that's a fun one. I need to pick myself up one of those. This is the 2016 Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this is the la third and final taste of our three tastes on the red tasting flight. But it has some expressive notes on the nose and uh, finishes with, with some of that French oak. It's 70% new French oak for 22 months in barrel. Now this might not be the best glass to be tasting cab out of. I get it, it's a tasting glass. Very focused. Oh yeah, uh, that's a big boy. Although the tannin is not as, as overwhelming as it was on the V blend. They're definitely more pronounced in this, except it, it, I think that extra French oak really helps smooth it out. It's not as aggressive. You do get some of that uh, espresso forward. It also mentions boysenberry. You can see that. It's like a... Um, it's definitely red fruit, either like in the boysenberry family or something, another ripe berry, or under, slightly underripe berry. As it, as it moves forward, it's kind of a jammy quality to it. It's quite nice as it opens up. Definitely the star of the flight. Well done. Oh, and I just, I just love the smell of French oak. All right, so we got a special extra taste. Um, this is their Reserve Syrah and I completely blanked on the vintage, but I did manage to remember that it's uh, 22 months in 40% new French oak. Um, and then I also have been saying my tasting room pendant's um, name wrong the entire time. Classic, classic me. Um, all apologies to Marisa. So this is a cool comment, Syrah. It's from the Edna Valley. It smells wonderful. Uh, if you remember, Syrah was the first red wine that really made me go, whoa, beautiful nose, heavy tannins, um, but it, it, again, it, it gets smoothed out, so it's not, it's not ag aggressive like the V was. Uh, red fruit's on the nose, and now we're in black fruit territory, I'm tasting maybe plum, um, with some white pepper uh, on the finish. Uh, and it lingers for quite some time. It's like a cranberry song in here. Hmm. And possibly some cranberries on the nose. You now it's definitely strawberry, maybe a little hint of rhubarb. It's so fascinating. It, it starts, the moment it hits the palate, it, it, it just changes and attacks and um, it gets all grrr. Rewind with Vishwitty, where we describe wine by saying it's very grrr. But yeah, it, does, it picks up some spices, um, it goes from kind of uh, fresh fruit to uh, more of like a baked fruit, jammy uh, consistency once it hits the, the mid palate and kind of just finishes again with that soft white pepper, uh, a hint of spice and it's um, very fun. I'm, I'm grateful I get to, got to try this during my tasting. So uh, let's talk about some differences between um, tasting here at Edna Valley uh, Vineyard versus Claiborne Churchill. Uh, here they're giving you a fresh glass with each pour, uh, whereas at uh, Claiborne Churchill they gave you the um, extra taste in a kind of a, a beer taster uh, where you would pour the next one into the glass yourself. Uh, I think it's quite nice that uh, they give you a fresh glass with every taste out here. Um, it gives you more contact with your um, your taster. And my my tasting attendant is very knowledgeable and um, is doing a great job. If there were other people here, everyone's distant, distanced quite well. It's all open air. Um, they have some shade if you're more of the shady type. Uh, and sun for those that enjoy the sun. Uh, different sized tables. Tasting in 2021 certainly has changed, but some things stay the same. It's nice to know that you can have a personal tasting 
uh, and still um, be socially distant. Um, I put my mask on every time she came over, just as a courtesy to my tasting attendant, Marisa. And um, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. You can find me online on Instagram at rewindshow.com, or sorry, <laughs> at rewindshow uh, on Twitter at the Schwitty. And like I said, go to rewindshow.com and find me on YouTube, which is my main source of uh, posting and caring uh, for, for Rewind. With that being said, this has been Rewind, another tasting in 2021 vlog. Uh, my name is Dishwitty, and I will catch you on Monday, where we have five more episodes to give you in the month of February. Um, my gift to you for being gone for two years. And uh, let me know if there's anything else that you want me to do, go tasting at, to review, what have you, in the comments below. And I will try to get around to that. And um, either way, catch you next time.